from lower to upper. That's where we are for game two. We're in a game with promotion on the line, not to playoffs, but to our promotion stage. I am Lynx, joined with Fellow on my left. Well, technically, you look like my right from my perspective, but like left from the screen. I always mix it up. Well, I'm just not real, so it doesn't True. really matter no matter which you're, way you look. You're an, right. You're an AI projection. Exactly. The hat is real, though. The captain hat, on occasion, will be worn and not just left on my boat shelf. Uh, today might not be one of those days, but who knows? Maybe uh, in the near future. At the Major, you could see me wearing that hat. So I did bring it back in Charlotte, too, so maybe we'll talk about that more later. But for now, we'll talk about the first promotion game of today, that being Triple G versus Slate. We saw them both have pretty similar score lines in their best of one matches. We had Slate with somewhat of an upset victory against Wildcard, where they really took advantage of a lot of mistakes that Wildcard ended up making after the first two rounds, essentially, with just getting far too aggressive, not picking off correct ball falling points, and just not really playing as a team in some instances. And we kind of saw the same thing for Triple G taking advantage of Quinta Negra, who we just saw play earlier in our first best of one matchup, Carter, where it was more of the case of over-aggression. And funny enough, uh, both teams played in the same map of Cafe, both yeah. back-to-back. I don't think we'll see Cafe today, but it would be Probably fun not. if we saw it for a third time. That would be pretty funny. And if we want to take a look at the players on Triple G, could be part of the strategy, especially since this is unfortunately one of those games where pound for pound, there seems to be a clear favorite. I mean, we have big names on this roster. Kool-Aid, former Parabellum. Spirits, former Parabellum, former Xset slash M80. Zeno, former Beast Coast. CZ, Surf, former Mirage. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> CZ, a big name in, in Tier 2 for a long time and a big player that's always been really close to that line of making it into T1. So, a lot of star players on Triple G. Don't think we'll be going to Cafe, but still, I have to imagine, if we were to go to Cafe, who I'd put my money on. And I think the amount of experience that almost all these players have had in either the higher end of Tier 2 or just playing inside of Pro League and even Majors, I think, at some point for one of these two players as well. I might be wrong on that, but either way, still playing inside of T1 is the, the main aspect of that. Being able to convert losing positions into winnable moments. We saw a lot of that on Cafe because we saw in the general stat lineup uh, how poor the entry game was for Triple G in their last match against CNE, where they were 3-7 and seven as a mostly pro team, which seems a little bit jarring, but even though they had a couple of, you know, small flubs, they were really consistent on finding trades, having people basically fill in the void that somebody else was holding before they died. They would then reconvert that position and still kill the guy who was originally holding it, and their executes would still look pretty solid overall. So if we even see just a slightly better entry game, we could most definitely see GGG win against Slate, unless they bring their A game today, like they did against Wildcard. And on the other side, we've also got some players that have been on A line on the cusp of breaking into A scene, but not on the same level as Triple G. Here, it's a lot of players coming in from that T3, Tier 2 area. They've been playing a lot in CL quals in the past few years. They're playing in a lot of the big T3 leagues but never quite making the jump until just now. Natural Spider are two big names that I myself have seen for quite a long time. Natural, actually, fun fact. First game I ever casted in a league that doesn't even exist anymore, that only 20 wow. people ever watched. Natural's part of the reason I even got into casting. So I got to give him a quick shout out real quick. Spider, I've, also, he, I've known him for a while too, but this is, again, a team that, as much as I love these guys personally, in one of those positions where, okay, stats are good. 7-4 on entry, average 1 rating, solid defensive win percentage. But can they really go up against some very, very experienced players who played at some of the highest echelons of Rainbow Six in a best of one? I'm not certain. Yeah, it's going to be a, a pretty big question to ask and kind of see it pan out over the course of this best of one, especially depending on you know what map we end up going to as well between Slate and GGG. Uh, but more importantly, I think it's just been the overall improvement of Slate that's been really beneficial for them now moving into the course of Tier 2. I remember casting them just a few months ago, and they had a lot of issues with being vocal, with converting winnable positions. And then you have, you know, Natural posting Twitter clips where he thinks his, you know, comming is a little bit choppy, but they still made a really good play off of acknowledging that, you know, the site is vacant in some instances because there are too many people roaming off the objective. So just being more aware of some issues that your opponent could have goes a long way in any instance, even if that team tends to, you know, not make 
as many mistakes because they have a lot of experience at the highest level of play. And so far, we do still have Cafe on the board in this best of one corner. It could Ooh. come down to one of the final maps that are left to us in this series. We might see it again. Either Cafe or Bank left, but still two structured maps. Slate oh, Band Cafe and Go to Bank. I have to say, I think G I think Triple G might have just outmaneuvered them in this phase because look at the options Slate are left with. Cafe, a map that Triple G have just played, sure, but same with Slate. And also a map, in this case, Bank, that is one of the most complicated maps to attack. And Slate are going against a team who have played Bank against some of the best teams in North America as individuals and likely scrimming a lot of those teams on Bank. So Slate right here, I think, might be outmaneuvered a little bit. Both maps that they were left with require a lot of coordination, and they're going against a team that, even if they get a little too aggressive, even if they make some mistakes, they know how to coordinate at a Tier 1 level, whereas Slate, they're just now getting experience at a Tier 2 level. Yeah, I really wonder how how aggressive we're going to see Triple G play, because Bank, it's a very large map. You can go about it in a handful of ways, and one of them is to really use the map to your advantage. Have a couple of roamers start out on the very top floor. Let's say you're defending the basement. Play some fall-off points, like, you know, going down marble stairs, going off the E3 hatch, moving a little bit lower into the map, and just still trying to waste more time and resources than playing in the bomb site. So I could imagine with everyone being pretty mechanically skilled on Triple G, that they might want to use that to their advantage, rather than giving Slate a lot of you know, ground to work off of and then have them pan into their execute. And I think one more thing to probably take a look at is probably the predictions that we have for this game. I think everyone is predicting that Triple probably. G are going to win this series. Like, yeah, that wouldn't shock me. Maybe the coin it might be the last bastion for Slate. Nope. <laughs> Not even the coin. <laughs> Not even the coin. That's tough. They really want to boost up to that 50% uh, mark, which speaking of, we have uh, quite a lot of people that are doing pretty good at predictions, I'd say. 90% for Crow, 80% for you and Crow's Seth. Fallen. I like, here's the thing, right? In a given season, I'm fine with like 70 to 80%. 70 especially. So like, if I'm chilling right here, like, I'm all good. I'm fine yeah. with this. 60 even, like, if it's... There was, there was one season of CL that was just a complete nightmare to predict. I don't remember what it was. But like, there was one season of CL <laughs> where I was even happy with getting 60. So I'm, I'm chilling with my 70 right now. I'm fine with it. Was that a Challenge League season that I was around? I know that I've kind of been more yeah, of the been. newer uh, person compared it to wasn't, everyone else. It wasn't, it wasn't the one where reality TV went flawless. That one obviously mm. was a little bit different. I think it was... <laughs> I think it was... I actually want to say it might have been Stage 2 where that Mr. B roster was like either world beaters one day or like kind of mid the next i think that yeah, was that's the they dropped tragical yeah yes so I, we had a lot of confusion about so that. yes you were there i think it was so summer of 2022 was a stage in which i was just happy to even mm. get above 50 percent. but right now i'm comfortable with my 70 and i'm comfortable with my triple g pick today especially after seeing that pick of bank uh, and then moving on to the attack as well having the amount of coordination that these players have on triple g to then clear out the map bring the right tools for the job if you see more of a focus on you know roamers and you might want to bring jackal if he's on the board because you will see from time to time him being banned on bank specifically with how roam centric this map is um you could either see the right operators for dealing with a more roam centric composition or something that is more reliant on utility in the bomb site and wasting time closer towards that execution stage uh, of the round itself during the action phase but it seems like the social prediction is also in the same boat that we are with triple g probably going to win this best of one against slate and we'll take a look as well at the operator bands which again with a lot of operators being good right now in the meta uh, we could really see anything a zombie's good on this map solace is really powerful because again the map is so big you could be hiding anywhere as a defender and if you have solace just breaking like three plus drones in the prep phase or like the first minute or two it's going to be even more challenging to deal with those roamers. So yeah. even seeing operators like, you know, Nook, who's good at taking those isolated 1v1s against the roamers, and Dokabi, who can have almost perfect intel so long as there isn't a mute on the board, uh, it makes sense for this map. Same thing with the Solus band. Yeah, I was about to say, following up with what you said, I mean, that Solus band taken off the board immediately by Slate. They're the ones starting the attack. They'll, they'd have to deal with the brunt of that Solus play from Triple G to start out, take that off the board. And now with that Valkyrie band as well, Slate won't have to deal with any cameras off-site either. But again, this being the meta that we're in, that still leaves Azami and Fenrir up for Triple G through no fault of Slate's own ban picks. And even then, we've seen teams pick the op that Seezy's pick, bring that Echo, not just use those Yokais to sit on site and wait for a server take, but use it to help your roamers, use it as a mobile camera to allow players 
on, uh, ironically enough, not CZ in this case, because he'll be the one inside of the site, but players like Surf on that Azami to deny control of top floor for maybe more than 45 seconds or a minute, deny control of that middle floor for more than a minute 15, minute 30, and give anybody on the roam a fighting chance at intel beyond just default cams or sound cues they might hear or not hear moving through the various entrances on bank. Seems like Spirits are going to be one of those main roamers playing here. You tend to see that for the Goyo as it's it's not too difficult to play for those fall points. Sometimes you want to run the shotgun as Goyo too, just to really play into the fact that there are a lot of, you know, longer angles you can hold, especially in that first floor if you don't want to commit too much on the top floor position. And uh, all right, Floof, he is just, uh, he's wasting no time whatsoever getting active in this top floor. But again, it seems like Triple G, although they don't have all of their eggs put into the basket of roaming, they don't want to give up too much of the map. They're still playing by that first floor. So Floof is going to be uh, basically falling on deaf ears as there is really no one to contest him for the first 30 seconds or so. A lot of very quick movements by Slate in the first 30 seconds, as you said. Not only Floof, of course, flying into that CEO window, but a nade flying in through open area early on. Floof now just around E1 looking for somebody. But there's the power of that Yokai. A Z-Ping, a stun, and a shotgun. A 1-2-3 punch by Kool-Aid and the rest of Triple G. That's an opening pick grabbed and held solidly by the defense. Natural now go upstairs, try to use some of those Candelas. Where's the follow-up? Is there any? Not really. Spirits will just back off for the time being. Rival can't push down. Acquire a new cutoff. Another Yokai as the Azami swings. Same with Kool-Aid on this smoke. They're trying to deny Marble Stairs as long as they can. And this Yokai is wreaking havoc on Slate's attack, and they're clear because we had a quick entry into the top floor. Second floor control established, 30 seconds in now. A minute has gone, and Slate have not progressed an inch. Still having to deal with those same positions as well. Seems like for Triple G, they have fallen off the roam just a tad, but they still have, I believe it was Surf, hiding just around that elevator in case someone doesn't really check for him for a second time. Might be able to hit a flank once they get control of open area, and yeah. That does seem to be the case, but Surf finally detected. Luckily, he has the hatch to fall off from, so just wasting a little bit more time and resources is not really a bad idea, considering, again, you've got all these Vulcan packs, you've got Fenrir gadgets, Toxic Babes, and even those Kibas we had just mentioned briefly as well. There's so much dedicated to this basement floor, and with Triple G already having a man advantage, they could just simply wait for Slate to try to push in, make that first move off those Candelas, and still be okay for the most part, so long as they give these Candelas a bit of distance and not be blinded by them. Natural cooking one Candela, not throwing the rest just yet. Not sure where it went. Might have gotten stopped or something. He's still on low HP as well. Kool-Aid has all three of his toxic canisters, and we've just hit 30 seconds. He can cover the entire remaining part of the round with denial. Now the smoke canisters land. The Candelas go out. There's no warden on the board, so somebody's got to see or use a C4. Drop Natural pushes on in. He does drop. What? Gets the kill as well, but he drops right into Kool-Aid. Smoke diffuser dropped on the floor. A Ooh. 4K for Kool-Aid. No ace today, but a very dominant round from the smoke and the rest of Triple G. Still being able to account for that lurk potential as well, just making sure nothing goes too crazy in that round for Gang Gang Gaming. And also, yeah, Jameson having an incredible round so far on the smoke, at least that basement floor bomb site. as Slate, oddly enough, decided to not go for the plant, probably because they just weren't able to stop the toxic babes and nitro cells from being too much of a threat. So they figured, well, if we can get our Ying off the hatch, maybe, you know, force back the rest of the defense and catch the smoke by surprise. That would then give us the coverage to get that diffuser down, but the exact opposite happened. Kool-Aid was able to eliminate every single person who ran into his line of sight, giving Triple G the round win. And now we see open area in play by them with a, I suppose, somewhat similar lineup, except now there's just, uh, you know, no smoke, and we've got, you know, Cap, Cannon, Frost, a few trap operators, just in case, you know, Slate tried to go all gas, no breaks, they might get, uh, you know, hit by something that could kill them outright. They are favoring that Ying quite heavily so far, so whether it's in the early or the late round, they'll have to watch their feet, make sure they're not hopping into any bear mats, walking into any EDDs, and even the f knots as well, make sure that they're not going to lose their eyesight the moment they go and try to take a fight with somebody on the defense. 
No shield directly outside of stock, instead one on the vending machine to watch those feet holes and still give the opportunity to contest, contest someone on top square if need be. No Amaru this time from Floof's eye there. He's moved to the Brava using those clutch drones. And I was about to say, you get a very nice default cam. This can watch the entirety of square to make sure that once they move into the double door or repel through the windows or move to the top of the stairway, nobody can flank up from the first floor. And the attack entering from this side should be relatively safe thanks to just one little clutch drone. Try as well. Establishing a cutoff angle outside the map that looks all the way down that upstairs hallway, just making sure if there is someone on the room who has to fall off, they have to be very precise as to where they try to head towards to move down below, or they will most likely end up dying to someone who's just still sitting outside, that being the Habana. And also, Loofs, who is, at this point, I would assume, getting ready to enter into the building once he figures out, you know, where these attackers are on the top floor. And yeah, Drone just sails by CZ, still playing up above. You've got Spider pushing in from ATM, but with him having the Diffuser, he's got to be a little more passive, as if he dies, someone has to completely rotate back to his position, and that would just cost way too many seconds. And yeah, Surf will spot him out, Spider will end up falling away, just trying to hold on that Diffuser and, you know, not throw anything away too early for Slate. Talking about not throwing anything for Slate, though, but they barely even picked up the ball. A lot of players still outside, just holding angles, and over half the round gone, and not much progress made on entering into any of these positions. Floofs, I will say, has made his way onto top blue, but the Beepers give away his position. Spirits gets the opening pick as well. That's the ATM player in a well-placed f not alerts the rest of Triple G that there's someone pushing in through square. Xeno is down, but not out. Somebody can go pick him up. The rest of Slate are also converging in this position, but in one fell swoop, the advantage has changed hands. Surf spotted as well. Shoots the F-Knot for good measure. Nobody knows now if he's pushing on in. Now three kills for Slate. Well, he's got to hold down the site. He knows somebody's pushed on in, but he's the last one left. Rival can wrap around, finish this one off pretty easily. Instead, it's natural with the trade. A well-placed and a nice shot from Kool-Aid. But Slate, even though they take a long time to get going, they end the round very quickly. I think for Slate, they acknowledged how many people were still playing off the site and being able to use those candelas to provide a lot of space both to deal some major damage over by the archives teller side of the map but also then work into the bomb site without advantage it went a long way for slate despite spider being the opening death in that round and with him being the you know player who had the diffuser Defenders and with there being no one else really close by attackers. besides maybe spy who would then just enter the building to potentially be able to pick up that diffuser and clearly Triple G are you know, maybe realizing that the you know, Ying might be the main facet of a lot of these attacks by Slate and are opting to recontest this bomb set of open area and maybe looking to potentially just uh, change something up slightly, like just general positions, to make sure that those Candelas aren't as potent as they were towards the final minute of that round, Carter. Still dropping one defensive round. Triple G can look to their basement defense. It's the one win so far and the foundation for future success. They'll attempt open area a second time, but oh, what do you know? We got a Ying. We can all agree on that. We can all agree that Natural's going to stick this Ying the entire time, but Spy are looking to punish Triple G for repetition. Spy's moved to the Blitz, but where is he going to go? Is he going to buy his time? Because sometimes a Blitz isn't always indicative of a rush or a round ending by 2.15. But it is indicative of whenever the plan is in place and whenever the operators are in position, that Blitz is going to move in very quick. And I do think it's worth noting as well, that's the man with the Diffuser. Here we go. They've creeped in ATMs, John, but still some droning. They're not pushing just yet. Oh, wait. Are we lying? There, there we go. Is. Never mind. There it is. <laughs> Beepers activate. Reveal Spy's position. They're just trying to bait me out. They threw that drone for no particular reason. Spots his first victim. Still not the first pick. Back to a 4v4. They know Spy is trapped inside of here. He's sticking with the ADS. You'll lose a couple bit of HP. It's easy. Fights back. Takes down the Blitz's coverage. Now Spy is trapped alone inside of Archives. The Floofs will rotate over to try to join his teammate. Taking top square. A natural shutdown. The rush, unfortunately, not paying off for Slate. They've really got to rely on maybe those smoke grenades to help provide a cross position and then get into the bomb site. And there it is. But Noah Cap nope. can trap and Kool Aid above at the same time. Find two separate kills. And that leaves only natural now in a 1v4. Surely no chance of getting that diffuser down. So it seems for the second attempt, it seems to be just right for Triple G. Despite that blitz being a minor headache, it seemed Carter. In the first few moments of that round, everything else went according to plan. And yeah, the chance of getting a plant down just didn't seem likely considering how strong of a position the defense was holding in open area still. 
if you just look at a small section of that or a small section of that blitz rush it was actually very good they wanted to hollow out a key part of the defensive strategy which is using archives to supplement open area and not only allow triple g a safe spot to rotate back but also allow them to contest square contest main lobby and atms if they blitz rush in and get a kill or at least clear it out they've solved a lot of the problems that stalled them for a lot of the round that they won anyway but that seems to be the big part that Slate focused on, which is good. But the other positions, like upstairs, other players in square, the ability to contest from maybe the beeper's hallway outside of the site, those weren't given the same bit of consideration as that blitz play. So we have Spy run in, get a kill, even though it's not the first. But the rest of the team that's supposed to bolster that to support him is cut down in ATMs, in square, in the hallway outside of the site, and the one section that was important and the flashiest it worked out but everything else it seemed maybe the intel wasn't as strong or hell maybe they knew and triple g just outgunned them at this point now seems like the jig is up in terms of running ying almost every single round as finally cz's opting to bring out the warden and of course with attacker repicks like and just say all right let's just bring something a little more useful for this composition which is going to end up being the flores that mixed in with a twitch and maybe some well-placed grenades it shouldn't be too difficult to end up destroying some of those gadgets, primarily the Vulcan packs, just to make sure they're not going to be a major challenge in the late round if you might be a little short on time to try to get that user down and also still have to deal with all those gadgets, specifically the Toxic Babes, which forced the hand of Slate to push right into the bomb site, allowing Kool-Aid to find a quadra kill on that round. And it seems like for Slate, they really want to focus on trying to get into the bomb site as early as possible, using Natural as the spearhead on the Montane, to allow the rest of his teammates to push into sight. And with the help of these Rotero drones, they can open up a lot of these soft walls to just already have ease of access and maybe focus more on an objective kind of round. Have to make sure that they have control of Square, though, with a couple players that seem stationed on that top floor. They're making sure that nobody can just flank down the server stairs, take down Natural from behind. Most players from Triple G either on the site or inside of open area, very close to marble stairs. So they've seeded the northeastern part of the map pretty solidly into the hands of the defense, and most of this will be an on-site affair. The warden rotating back specifically shows that they have a feeling this execute is coming in quickly. They don't want to get caught off guard with smoke canisters or smoke grenades dropping, flashes going on in. They want to make sure CZ, a very mechanically skilled player on an operator that is basically crafted to allow you to get kills with that MPX 1.5, They'll rotate him back to make sure the execute gets stopped. They spot Xeno on that top floor, but that was the only headache that had to worry Rival. Never mind, Surf's also rotated upstairs, but he's not really providing any pain either. Xeno down, Surf 1 HP, Spirit also worse for wear as we all approach a minute left. Triple G. I've managed to stall Slate for a little bit, but Spider domes Kool-Aid. Traded out in turn. Still Triple G in the disadvantaged position. Well, no plant to now left either, Carter. Still going down here for Slate. There's Rival with the finisher on the player, but Bob, but oh! no, the impact and Surf tag team actually works. Natural low in HP, but it doesn't matter. They don't need the case to win this round as they have plenty of coverage by Floof still playing in the back of server. A close call it looked like for just a split second, but again, with Slate having enough players down below, they still made quick work of that basement floor bomb site and now tie us up two to two. Very slow, very one-sided execute, but as you said, it does end up panning out. No C4s, unfortunately. It all came down to impacts that go around, and they do take down Spy, but all the time and all the manpower they dedicated to dealing with that planter, they all lined up for the players on Slate, and they fell in rapid succession. 2-2, two -two, though, for Triple G on defense on Banks so far. Not the worst stat line at this point of the game. Not at all, especially when you've only played two sites so far. They'll go to their third CEO to see if they can guarantee themselves at least an even half before Slate have a chance to defend their own set of bomb sites. Now seeing the Mira in play for the first time as well. That can be a pretty effective tool for making positions like the window repels a little bit more taxing for the uh, attackers to try to utilize as you could just have someone like Kool-Aid just kind of quick swing you and and you're dead because he's got info on you and also trying to enter into the bomb site from that direction and still having plenty of other valuable operators like that Giba, barriers, hands of spirits, and some deployable shields to help those extensions just a little bit outside of the 
objective itself is going to also force, you know, people like Floofs to be pretty much pinpoint like he was just last round. But those are tarot drones. There really is a lot of utility set up into this bomb site as it is kind of a make or break objective. If you give too much slack for Slate, they could almost immediately hop into the objective and try to get that diffuser down. And this is one of the more challenging bomb sites to retake because of those outside angles you can hold just by playing on the lapel. Rival snuck himself into a bit of a tricky position. You can watch this hatch inside a janitor, and there's nobody playing in it just yet, but Kool-Aid might enter momentarily. Rival knows they're making that rotate. The mirror, oh, just goes to the other side. There's another one close by, though. This is a spot that is very difficult to land a shot on, but if he can spot a Wamai, a Mira, a Warden, anybody creeping in through that hole... That'll be a big pick on a powerful operator, any of those three. And all have been acquired in the first minute. Meanwhile, the rest of the attack is clearing out stock, opening the square wall, and Rival can also use those nades from below to deal with that Mira. Fully now on low HP, but knows Rival's position. That's fine, though. He's still got half the round, and he can lurk up Marble Stairs, or hell, even use that final frag grenade for another explosion from below. The last floor is thrown. Oh, the impact caught it just in time, but oh, the bullets still connect by Floofs. Beautiful shot trying to catch CZ in a bad location, but the favor is returned by Surf on Arrival. Wow. He's good for two. What the MPX quick spray down a spider tries to aggress off that man advantage, and now things are dead even. In a three versus three, Slate just outside the objective, still the potential to get that diffuser down, but Zeno still might have a yokai activated, and he does. There's still potential to stop that diffuser from going down so long as they can you know, hold off this progression that's still leading up over by Janitor, and there it is, a triple for Surf with the help of the Yokai. Stunned and bullets, a lethal combo. Surf's got three, the only ones for his team. Wow. Make that four, this is an ace in the making, but Spy flees into the bomb site for any measure of safety. Double 4Ks for Triple G throughout their defensive half. No aces just yet, but they have guaranteed that tie game at a bare minimum. An oddly similar teamwork that we saw back in round number one by Triple G, having the Yokai be able to assist someone like Surf to then get hyper aggressive, work for those isolated one for ones, especially on someone who's at a disadvantage when taking those gunfights. It's not even a pure 50 50 position. And now you don't know if Surf is, you know, aggressive back inside a Janner or if he's fallen off onto a more passive position to maybe focus Defender, on the plant. It was the first option out of the two. He limits this person by stock, and now there, there really is no chance for Spy to get that diffusion down like we just saw, Carter. Solid job by Triple G to pick the perfect moment as to when to get aggressive is when they didn't really have any more utility to fall off on. It comes back to that earlier problem that we mentioned during the prep phase of when that utility runs out. It can be very easy for Slate to just set up and play for the objective and as that was about to happen with the first set of kills happening we saw triple g then asserting their dominance in the round playing for trades and ended up allowing surf to kind of go crazy in round five going back to their basement defenses though this is the third time that we've seen it and still no c4s but they have put cz back on that echo so if slate try to go for a server plan they have something to deny it this time Though it looks like Slate aren't looking to repeat either their first round attack or their round four attack. Because there's no Ying, but there's also no Monty. There is Floofs on that Amaru, so they are certainly going for a full clear. Uh, right as I say that, he's not over by the main lobby side this time. He's upside down repel. He's going to get a cheeky kill on a player inside of open area. There is one who might get aggressive. They tried to nade this player last time, but they're looking for a more direct solution. Without having to use utility, but I doubt... Yeah, exactly. I don't want to see Zeno peek out from behind that reinforcement anytime soon. They'll still go for the full clear up top anyway. Ooh, and Floofs as well. Gar hooking up above, maybe to hold just a little angle on the marble staircase or going somewhere else. Perhaps I really thought he'd be watching in case someone wants to try to push in a natural fray, get some vertical down. But no, that's not going to be the case. But still, same thought of process going into effect here by Slate. Now they can slowly begin to work away those roamers who could still be by the first floor. And even Spider, if his position is not figured out, by the defense, he could maybe surprise Spirits, and as his teammates are pushing into square, they could get a nice two, nice one-two punch going in to get that potential first opening gunfight win for the offense, but it still seems like they're very focused on the elevator side of the map to still find an entry kill one way or another. Trying to enter from that side, but Spider not helping a lot at the moment. 
but he could move into server later on while all the attack is focused on the front side push. Maybe get catch Zeno or Kool-Aid off guard. That leaves Slate with their direct push right now in a 4v5. Unfortunately, a missed flash will stop the elevator push for a couple seconds. I'll give Surf time to reposition, start looking over towards that Kiva barrier that is now being blown up. He's got to worry about Elevator 2, one drops, Rival put to 1 HP, but that's why they dropped Elevator as well. Opening pick going the way of Slate. They got the advantage, and they'll likely keep it for the next few seconds, never mind. Zeno is able to get aggressive, shut down Rival. Loops gets the hell out of Dodge. He leaves Spy alone with the Diffuser. Now he's trying to go for the Vault, add a second angle, but these are both 1v1s now. We'll have a crossfire on this part of the map, but if Spy or Loose give away the game too early, that's a 1v1 for CZ, and the other's got to sprint to get to the trade. Fully now down. Natural still holding this angle. Remember, Spider's also inside of dirt. A lot of lurks now paying dividends. For 30 seconds left. A decent amount of time for Slate. Now they have the advantage, some utility as well. Those smoke grenades to deny angles. They've got to hit the go button. Spider's made his way in now. Everyone from Slate focused on that front side with Zeno and Gold. He can't deny it either. Natural Jobs, Sp Spirits is watching. They cut down Floofs too, but now the Goyo, he's all alone. He's got an angle on the Diffuser. There it goes. Spiders lurk ever so patient, has allowed Spirits to rotate off and guard the Diffuser through the soft wall. Just wait two seconds, and you'll catch Spider with hands on the keyboard and not on the trigger. A 4-2 half as Spider falls off, knowing his fate is sealed. And that was the only real problem that we had for Slate was the lack of coverage for the plant. Everyone was so separate to try and mitigate any sort of power play that Triple G could have gone for in those final 40 seconds that by losing a couple of one-on-ones that left Shy or Spy part and very vulnerable to someone just simply walking over at him and stopping that plant from going down, especially since we didn't have anyone try to help over by the garage side of the map. Spirits could just kind of lay there and wait, not be too pushed back by anyone sitting up on top of the hatches and just waiting for the execute to happen. And once the echo died in the bomb site, that gave him, you know, the pretty much the go button of, right, it's time to get aggressive, try to kill this Obana, who we know for a fact is ISO because we just heard earlier the Omaru going back up the other hatch to drop down vault. We just killed her a second ago as well. So really good job by Triple G for not overcomplicating that, I guess, anchor position in the final 30 to 20 seconds and just waiting for Slate to be exposed to some of their weaknesses of being far too separate. 4 2 half for Triple G on the defensive side of bank. Not bad at all. Kind of the issue that we, or at least I talked about before the game started, that acquiring map control on bank is a very difficult affair, and sometimes Slate were just left with either going for a direct take, but still did acquire a lot of that control, and even if they had trouble at the open area side of things, a lot of it really came down to the execute stage, whether it be plant coverage, as you talked about, John, in round number six, having the correct utility from the defense in round number four when they try to attack basement. Not a bad showing from Slate, but still 4-2. At least in theory, this is a great spot for Triple G to find themselves in. The mirror dealt with early on will force Spider back from this aggressive position in open area fairly quickly. Oh, he's seeing if anybody's just going to blind peek the window right as the Selma breaks. Nobody does. Spider will just hang out here. I believe they caught a glimpse of Spider. Can't say the same for Floof says, yeah, he'll just try to peek off of this open double door. Does a bit of damage on a CZ, but no confirmed kill just yet. Now he'll fall inside a janitor, has the hatch to fall away from. But it looks like he still wants to up the ante just a little bit, popping the Vulcan pack just to waste a little bit more time and maybe even opt to still go for this aggressive peek. There's CZ with the open or natural shut down, Alliance scan being called off. So now they've got a bit of breathing room to not lose any more bodies. But with CZ still being very low in HP, the chance for a trade is very high. Rival does give his position away shooting that drone. Somebody might know that he's around the corner on top marble. He's one of the only players left now. Spirits completely hollowed out the middle floor defense. Spy is all alone right now on the bomb site, even though there's still one other teammate left alive. Rival's got to do a lot of work to bring this back. He'll just cut his losses, head back downstairs. There are two players from Triple G on low HP. CZ one bullet away from death, and Spirits just only a couple more. One of them will have to get aggressive, cut Zeno down. That makes the job a lot easier in theory, but Kool-Aid's watching and waiting, hoping someone gets aggressive. Oh, what a long shot from server. A 2K to round things out, and a very quick affair for Triple G on their first attack. We talked about the coordination briefly in the first half, Carter, and I think that round specifically was a very nice example of it by Triple G. The second they found that opening gunfight, they call an alliance scan just to make sure that Sl uh, Slate can't find any sort of 
trade and slow down Triple G's top to bottom clear in that round. And with them also still having plenty of intel to gather from their drones, the lion skin we just mentioned, and also the jackal tracks and CZ was still alive in that round. That also helps isolate some of those roamers that are still playing up above. And although they had about two people or so, with them still being a little bit separate, does allow for more aggression to favor the side of the offense that then forced away the rest of the roamers that were kind of, you know, butchered by Triple G in just that first minute, minute 30. And when you have essentially a five versus two position all the time in the world for the offense who also have that man advantage, yeah, it's just a round that isn't meant to be when you don't have any chance of pulling off any kind of heroics in that round. And Slate, kind of desperate for options, they will decide to go back down below into the base floor bomb site and run almost a almost a copy of what yeah. they had just last round, which is kind of a kind of a concern. That's definitely my biggest concern and confusion right now. You're always in a difficult spot when your opponent is up 5-2 and you're on the defense specifically. you got to decide, okay, do we go to the same side we just lost but vary things up, or do we give them a new look on a different bomb site but that we also haven't played? But typically, if you go to that same bomb site, like you said, you give them a new look, you give them a different lineup. This is basically the same setup that we saw Triple D G dismantle. This time, though, what? there is a big difference. Surf either forgets the mirrors there or Spider peaks it even quicker than he did last time, and he gets the ace. Not five kills, but an important operator nonetheless. Again, Ooh, and uh, down pretty much immediately, but I mean, that's a way to vary things up. On the bright side of things, Carter, the Kate is still gone from the middle floor, and although you lost the Selmas, you've got two sets of pocket charges, so four in total for the hatches, and if you really need an opening, into the bomb site to get that default plan down. What? It's not a big concern, but the lack of intel seems to be the problem right now They're for Triple drones. G. As that, yeah, they just they just didn't realize someone was playing all the way back in CEO, despite the amount of info they could have used for that. Again, another trade established by Spirits with that DMR. The camera's being really potent for him currently in this round, so it's still even. But it just seems a little bit odd as now they don't have the Ying candles to help create that space. Which, given the fact there's no Warden. And really, not too much utility to slow down the offense besides maybe the Vulcan packs, depending on where they're placed. Ying would have been really strong for this push. And what? They're just going to drop? And it works! And get the kill! Spirits with a 3k! Oh my god! Triple G have just bailed themselves out of a losing position time and time again in round 8. And they might just get match point off of it. Lux is now going to hop back with only Spirits on the coverage. He's got a lot of the kill so... So Flus will definitely be worried after taking this engagement. Bomb now down. Those spirits on low HP. Two 1v1s for Flus, but he's not wow. even 80. Asked as he takes the gunfight. I have never seen a team win around in a more undeserving fashion. A lot of mistakes made early on just somehow don't affect Triple G by the end. It seemed like they realized there was still a, a major opening or two down below in the basement, so they figure, well, sure, we don't have Candelas to make the space, but if we drop, well, we might win some of these one-for-ones if Slate decide to get a bit too aggressive and play into us dropping down that hatch. And uh, the gamble play seemed to have worked out for him, especially when you have the skeleton key DMR combination, you can play at the uh, two opposites of range, playing either really close in someone's face or across the map, like we kind of saw when covering that plant to then, you know, have the objective be put on the ground, an attack timeout being called by, I believe it was Slate in this position since they're the ones that are kind of in a, kind of in a bit of a, a rut right now. I'd really hope that was the case. And uh, they've gone the same bomb site twice, the same composition twice, and it's failed on two separate occasions. I don't really know what they're gonna try to bring out this time. It just doesn't seem to be doing the trick against uh, Triple G. And that's where that key decision affects you. It's like, all right, well, we have to try a new bomb site now that we haven't played so far in this match. And if we don't get it right the first try, Triple G have a regulation victory in their hands. By the way, third 4K for Triple G, by the way. First, we had, yeah, first we had Kool Aid, then we had Surf. Mm -hmm. Now we have Spirits getting a 4K on the attack this time. The individual skill on Triple G is showing up today and not necessarily being the defining factor in a round, because Cooley got a 4k in round one, but that was still a lot of great coordination to allow him to get some of those aggressive kills on Marble Stairs. Then on the opposite side, you have what we just saw, which is Spirits basically single-handedly bring the round from the back from the brink, and then push it over the finish line. 
through sheer individual effort early on and later. It's got them to the 6-2 position. Slate, as you just saw, taking a tactical timeout. They'll try the new bomb site. No, they gotta give Triple G a different look, throw something different at them. It's on CEO this time, though. And with Ying on the board, Triple G might try to end this one quick and decisive. Bring the Ying. Maybe bring some smokes, though it seems they're not going that way. But still, if they wanted to go for a CEO plant and this one quick, they could finish at 7-2 in barely a minute. I was really hoping Kool-Aid oh? would stick the Grim. They've got onto an Osa instead, smoke which is still now. a very impressive operator to have. And yeah, the smoke grenade's probably noticing that there's no Warden on the board. So in terms of making space to get that plant down, it seems a little bit easier. Now that they've noticed one specific operator is not on the board, there is still an Echo, and with his gadget being a little more AoE and not too pinpoint, uh, you could theoretically use it to stop plant from going down if someone's in that smoke and aim it somewhat correctly. But also, Rival's in kind of a position where if you know one grenade gets tossed up at just the right time, he's dead and can't use his yokai's anymore except to gather info. So either way, there's good potential for Triple G to still get that plant down and uh, now have a lot of coverage for it in the post plant as well with the help of those talent shields and also again the wind repels which is what makes this site really demanding for any defensive team no matter how you slice it a lack of a warden could very well bite slate though they're basing mm. all of their plant denial on that echo and on that c4 because look at the strategy that triple g are going for no one entering the building everyone going on repel to hold these angles yeah. xeno moving to kanto to watch anybody moving out through elevator where the echo is currently Two different people on the CEO repel, not including Kool-Aid, who will likely be the one maybe going into the bomb site with that diffuser. Only guy in the win right now is, I think, CZ, who could go for alert from below, then use those frag grenades to clear out any roamer below the bomb site. And surf with those candelas. We're just waiting for the moment where those activate. Xeno even sees that f not on Marble Stairs. That's activated. He can shoot it, then drop immediately after once the chaos starts brewing and boiling over in CEO. Surf's... Cook that candela. Smoke canisters detonate. Bet you wish you had a warden now as Kool-Aid sends it on in. Drops the talent shield. The C4 needs to land. And it misses the broad side of a barn. He'll fall off the diffuser momentarily. Maybe anticipating another C4. That gives Spy the opportunity to creep up. He can see Kool-Aid now, but he's got that talent shield. Never mind. A bullet curves and finds him anyway. Repel player cut down. His execute falling apart. But never mind. Zeno in the cut. Type 89 clinical in his hands. Rival's got a castle barricade saving himself from the repel angle. But he's got to fight Zeno. And he's itching for a 3k. 38 seconds left. He'll, they'll, they'll bide their time. Got a few drones to find this utility and consolidate on one side. Spirit's making the smart decision. Fall off that repel. Join Zeno because the diffuser's in the site. You have to go for the kill. No hard breaching. No other angles you can open except maybe with a lifeline. This guy's on 1 HP. Pinch him and end this game 7-2. Echoes backed off to Banana. Spirits makes his way in, but nobody's found him. There we go! Zeno finds his man, finds three of them in round nine, and finishes this game almost as quick as it started. Almost another 4K for Triple G, but regardless, a win on bank against Slate off of the heroics by Zeno towards the very end of that round and you mentioned it perfectly carter once you see that execute hold into the site by the rest of triple g that's where xeno comes into play just to add a little bit more into that attack and in case everyone's too focused on stopping the plan from going down he could get a couple of freebies just dropping down and catching a few people by surprise so really solid job by triple g for taking that into account and not just completely relying on that plant from going down and Kind of like we talked about earlier during the, the run of show, Carter, there were moments in the early round where Triple G looked a little bit worse for wear. I think the best example of that is when Spider probably killed Surf. But because everyone on their team can just play oh so well in the, in the moment they are needed most, it didn't seem like that big of an issue. That's four multi-kills throughout that entire game from Triple G. Three 4Ks, one 3K. The individual skill from Triple G, either just making flashy rounds or... In two different cases, bailing them out from a loss, finishing the game 7-2. They'll now move on to our promotion stage. We'll have to play a best of three to make it into playoffs and have up to two losses before they are in a do-or-die position. Slate, on the other hand, they're not going down to elimination just yet. They're still in best of one territory. They have the opportunity for different games. Nice. Good shit. Let's go, baby. Yeah, yeah.
At least we got a little more hype this time. Oh, right. that, that, was, that was March. Yesterday, we had people screaming. <laughs> it was best of ones. This, yeah. They just made a promotion stage, and they were like, and we're done with our and shit. Show, guys. I'm going to go watch the new JJK season. I'm like, whatever. We'll, we'll see what promotion's <laughs> like next week. So I definitely uh, want to know if we still had more of like a, a negative side of the entry game. I, I don't think so for this game. Sure, there was a bit more of a back and so. forth, but I think, you know, Spirits was popping off a lot in the first half. And, you know, I also saw the second half as well, but that wasn't so much an entries. It was just kind of just shooting people the right way. Yeah. So I, I think we'll see a more, you know, positive outlook on the stats for Triple G. But, you know, the same thing could have been said yesterday, too, despite that game being just a little bit closer. The only problem they really had uh, was with entries. But that wasn't even a problem this game against Slate. Again, they were using their utility to help assist their teammates who were playing off site to have more advantageous gunfights. You had people playing together for trades. But other people who are, you know, still continuing to find these isolated defenders and just kind of sweep in on them before they could, you know, go for a fallback option. I feel like we had a, a pretty big issue with that for Slate is just not being able to pick between, you know, falling back or being able to go into an advantageous gunfight. They were always just kind of in the middle of, oh, maybe I could challenge this guy before things get too hectic, or I should just try to go now before someone has my cutoff angle. And they just uh, made one too many decisions incorrect. Of course, once we take a look at the stats, still what I'm thinking about in my mind is just all the multi-kills that we saw. Even, you know, if we're, true. If we're expanding our range, you know, 4Ks and 3Ks are big, but even quite a bit of double kills throughout that entire game. Bullet able to figure, finish some rounds by a couple well-placed shots, and that's at least reflected in my mind in the rating and the kills. Not necessarily the entries, which are actually a bit more even than you might think, given the nature and the progression of that game. The cost also very solid. On the side of Triple G, all the stats looking very good. But man, the ability for four-fifths of that team to show up and have big rounds. I mean, when you think about it, who was the only person that didn't have a mo I guess CZ, oddly enough, yeah. Only person, negative, by the end of that game, one-on-one -on, -one on the entry. But he's the only guy who didn't also have a multi-kill by the end of that game. Though, he did have a plant, and that's a multi-kill in my heart. And it did seem like he was playing, uh, at least on the defense, a bit more of a supportive role, if anything. Uh, you could argue that Jackal as well could be used more to help enable your teammates, if anything. Although, I think the one round that we could pinpoint him the most on for Jackal was where he still found that entry kill. And then his teammates were also assisting him as well by just creating space and making sure no one was going to refrag him since CZ was very low from that specific round. So, overall, another consistent showing by Triple G, and because of that, they get to move up into promotion and then play a best of three against uh, either whoever comes out on top in their promotion match later today, or who we see tomorrow as well, since we also have a couple promotion games to discuss on that day too. Well, it is a victory, one team won, so we have someone to talk to from Triple G, and it is someone that I loathe. I despise with my entire being. It is Kool-Aid AF1. I'm just kidding. I've known Kool-Aid for a long time. It's kind of mean, it's kind of mean, man. Kind of mean. I think it was yeah. pretty mean. Actually, you know, let's oh. let let's actually let's be mean a little bit. So in oh. that game, in that game, you had a 4K, mm -hmm. Spirits had a 4K, Surf yep. had a 4K, Zeno had a 3K, but CZ, what happened? No multi kill from him. What's going I on? I mean, he felt kind of generous today. He let a, let me get a couple kills. You know, I didn't do too hot the first game, so you know, had had to give me a couple freebies. All right, you know that's so. fair. You, did get your freebies in round number one. I'll give you that. Earlier today with the first game that we saw, we saw kind of some teams outmaneuver the other in the map ban phase. And I thought it might have been a similar one with this. You guys go to bank, map that typically requires a lot of coordination to acquire map control on the attack. You think this game was kind of won by VBM in the ban phase before it even started? Or was this all your performance in the server? I mean, I would say VBM is a great coach. One of the best. Map ban phase is always won. However, this time around, we used a random number random number generator to get the final three maps. So, you know, up, up more to chance than... Are you perjuring but... yourself? Is this a lie? Are you no. being honest and truthful no, right now? No, you can look in the Discord channel. There's a random number generator. If I go in that Discord channel, will I see a random number generator? You're telling me that right now. I'm telling you, 100%. All right, I'll, I'll check that after the game. We'll move on to other things right now. So you are our first team making it into the promotion stage. I actually just got added, so I'll verify it while you answer this. You are the first team making it to the promotion stage. And I mentioned yesterday, Snake believes he's going flawless throughout this stage. And now you're the first team to make it to play a best of three. Do you think maybe uh, you might have a date with Snake in the promotion stage? And do you think you'll take him down? I mean, it depends on if they play how the team wants to play. 
That's my opinion. I won't go too into that. What do you, now, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? I mean, I don't want to start beef in T2. I feel that's a little bit under the bridge for me right now. Uh, so I'll, I'll just leave it at that. All right, all right. I, re I respect the man who will let the game do the talking, and you certainly let it do the talking today. So thank you, Jameson. Is there anything you want to say, uh, I don't know, to uh, boost the Triple G brand before we sign off? Um, not really, man. Have a good one, gangsters. All right. <laughs> Have a good night. Have a good Shout one. Out. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> they I'm sorry, kept, I couldn't keep it together. They kept him on the screen for a long time after that one. They oh, did man. not let him get off clean. And uh, I have uh, I have seen they did, in fact... Uh, they they did didn't let Slate get off clean either. They, no, they demolished them. John, uh, I can verify. I looked too. I wanted you to verify it. They though. did use a random number <laughs> generator to ban those maps. So I yep. thought we'd have a nice talking point. And he did still, you know, he did still give some credit to VBM. But no, nah, they... Uh, they did do that. So, <laughs> I don't even know what to say at that point. We got one more game tonight. We got yep. Carnico versus 1HP coming up. Our second promotion game of the night. We'll see you. We'll see who wins. We'll see who plays. We'll see you after a short break. <laughs>